Hey everyone and welcome to my craft room. Uh, my name's Julianne Richards and I'm an independent stamping up demonstrator in southern Tasmania. Um, just forgive me, I uh, haven't caught up my iPad, which I usually do before I start, so I'll just catch that up. Make sure there's some volume happening. My Ooh, there is definitely some volume there, not that you probably want to hear my voice, I know I, I hate it if you listen to yourself on... Um, you know, you listen to yourself on your answering machine or, or whatever. It's just uh, not a pretty, not a pretty sound. But anyway, other people don't seem to not like, um, dislike it too much. Okay, today I'm going to make what they call a flower pot or what I've seen called a flower pot card. And this is the little um, number here, the, the original that I've made. Um, so it's quite sweet. It's... Um, it's uh, it's sort of a novelty sort of shape and um, you actually um, pull out that little central piece that's snug fittedly sn fits snugly down in there and that's where you pop your your sentiment and your message and all those sorts of things but the good thing is that you can decorate the top um, like uh, with some beautiful flowers and and things like that which really really works really nicely with this um, stitched blooms um, die set which um, I've got here the pierced blooms I mean um, really really sweet little blooms they're quite um, what would you call it primitive in their style they're sort of like you know so, uh, something that uh, a child would draw um, so quite sort of innocent and um, um, and primitive I suppose yes but but really really nice and and bright when you, you pop it into this really lovely designer series paper um, so I'm going to use that today. I'm also going to use the sentiments out of the In Bloom stamp set, which uh, is part of the bundle with the pierced blooms. Um, I am struggling, I don't mind telling you, struggling a little bit with this one, although Jan Casey, who I've just seen pop on, tagged me in a post this morning, so I might get some inspiration there. St struggling a little bit with these um, these stamps, but the sentiments are are really really nice. So um, yeah, so but I will. I always like a challenge. I will definitely get. Um, I'll, I'll get to grips with these stamps uh, sooner or later, even if it kills me. Anyway, so this original um, stamp uh, card that I created, uh, I'll go through the colours that I've used. I've used um, so saffron, flirty flamingo for the flowers, and I think that is. Uh, Highland Heather. It's not dark enough to be gorgeous grape so it's so saffron, Highland Heather and Flirty Flamingo and the leaves are Granny Apple Green. So that's like nice, oh, they're sort of really, really nice colours together and the, the flower pot itself is actually in um, cinnamon cider. Oh, I tried it in the terracotta tile which I thought would probably be a good colour for it but I think I like the cinnamon cider better. So it's actually quite a simple little card and as I say really lovely. I um, Back when I was taking orders um, for cards I actually, and you might have to use your imagination a little bit here, I had a, a lady who ran or runs, I'm not sure that she still does, a um, fast food outlet, a famous quite uh, well-known fast food outlet down here in Hobart and she got me to make about 50 of these for her staff and if you can imagine it, um, the flower pot's actually built sort of more in red um, with a big yellow M on the front of it. And I actually put like hundreds of little sort of um, French fry chip shaped coming out the top. So it looked like a chip packet from that particular fast food joint and she gave them to her staff. Um, so it's a good little, you can turn it into just about anything you want. It's a flower pot, but... You know, it could be any design that you think you could um, turn your mind to. Anyway, so let's get started. Enough of the chatter. I'm going to do some different colours with the one I'm going to show you today. It's all about using scraps. And I don't know about you guys, but I always end up with these pesky, like two to three inch wide scraps. You know, you've used, <clears throat> excuse me, you've used um, the bulk of the piece of paper and you pop it away and you go, oh, I'm going to use that later. And guess what? <clears throat> You never do well you can with this so I've got lots and lots of scraps and I tell without telling a lie these are all out of my scrap box so yeah so that's definitely a good way of using them um, and, st and the colors I'm going to use are Poppy Parade, uh, Daffodil Delight and Mango Melody 
and the leaves and things I'm going to do in mint macaron instead of the granny apple green. So that's the colours basically we're going to use today for this one. Okay, so all you need to do, and it's quite quick, you need sometimes when I look at my die cutting and go, can I really be bothered? Um, it's very, very quick with this. Actually, what I just did was grab my scraps, my big long scraps of paper, and then I chose the three largest blooms from our stitched blooms. So as you can see, there are so many here. If you uh, measure the value of your dies by the uh, by the kilo or by the pound, this is definitely a good stamp set, uh, die set to get. There's just so many that you can use. And then even if you don't use the die, the stamp set, these dies will be useful for quite some time. So I just picked the three biggest. As you can see, there's three quite different little flowers here. Popped it through my die cutting machine and for each three colours, I've got three flowers each. Uh, okay, and then these are the little centres, and they're quite quite um, in unusual little centres, I think, because they're quite non-uniform in their shape. They're not round. They're sort of even not not even oval. They're sort of a sort of a sort of almost like an egg shape. So I've popped that through a couple of times. And I've got those in the um, Daffodil Delight as well. So I've got uh, four of the big ones and two of the little ones. And the good thing with these dies is that you've got two dies attached to the... Um, you've got two dies attached to each other. So you pop it through and you get um, more bang for your buck, so to speak. So you don't have to go through as many times as you might have to. So I'll just show you all my little pieces. So uh, as I say, I've got the, um, the flowers in those three colours. And then I popped the leaves through in the mint macaron. So I've got the two big sort of branches of leaves here. And these are very good because one arches to the left and one arches to the right. So you can use them as a lovely frame um, rather than having them go the wrong direction if you're a bit, um, a bit uh, um, fussy about those things like I am. And then I've got a couple each of a couple of these other leaves as well just to stick in around the place. Okay, so that's all the die cutting I need. I was going to do it for you today and I thought, no, you know, watching someone die cutting is probably like watching paint dry. So I've done all the die cutting, although I will cut the actual flower pot because I think that's important that you see how that's done. Okay, so as you can see through my little plastic bag, I've got all my flowers, I've got my centres and my leaves there. And I really like just looking at them in the bag. They're quite sweet. I quite like the colours together. I think I've chosen um, my scraps. I'm quite happy with my choice of scraps there. So I'll pop those aside for a little minute and we'll cut the actual uh, flower pot. So, see if I can make sure I can get this into the view properly. So I'm starting, as I say, with an A4 piece of um, cinnamon cider. And we're going to have a piece, start with a piece of cardstock that's four inches wide and eight and a half inches long. Hopefully you can see that. I don't know that you can see the end of my trimmer there. I think that's about as far as up as I can get. Anyway, eight and a half inches long. Just like that. So that's a four by eight and a half. Then what I'm going to do is score it at um, three and a half. Make sure I get the right attachment. Score it at three and a half and seven. And that sort of is, as you can see that, that is the basic shape of your, what's the basic shape of your, of your pot. So there's the little rim of the pot there that sits up like that. What we do want to do though is bring these sides in and taper these sides in a little bit. So what you need to do for that is just line it up with your trimmer or whatever it is that you use. You want half an inch off at the bottom. So line that up with the half inch mark on your trimmer and then you'll be cutting down there to the edge where that, where that uh, rim fold is there. So not all the way down to there but just to that score mark there. So we've lined that up with half an inch there and there with the zero and everything's fallen apart with my trimmer. What do 
you doing? Go up there. There we are. So you've just taken off a wedge that's thicker at the bottom and thinner at the top. So and then we'll fold it over the other, turn it over the other way, line the top up at the half inch, the bottom up at that um, score there, and then again we'll take that little bit off. So really you've ended up with this sort of sort of sort of um, tapering there to the middle, then out, and then you've got your sort of left this sort of left as a rectangle at the end there. Totally screwed, uh, <laughs> mucked up that explanation, but you see that's where you want to end up with something like that. There is a little um, dem uh, diagram that I found on Pinterest, so I'll, I'll pin that on my page as well so you guys can see that. It's actually probably easier to see it as a diagram than me try to explain it. Okay, so um, it's quite nice just left like that. And as you can see, the original one, I have just left the rim straight, this little part here, I've just left it straight. But I thought it'd be nice to give it a little serrated edge, which a lot of them that you see on Pinterest have a little serrated edge. I don't have a punch that does that as such, but I really like the little um, uh, stitched um, edge serrated edge on this um, stitch so sweetly dies and if Sally's watching she'll giggle because I always manage to bring these out regardless of um, what cards I'm doing the stitch so sweetly come out practically every week okay so so I thought I'd do is bring use that to die cut the edge of my pot and I am going to have to bring my die cut machine in because I wanted to show you how I do that. So I'm going to open it up. No, hang on. I had this all sorted in my brain, but I don't know if it's going to work now I look at it. Yeah, uh, yeah, hang on. So I want it to be that way, uh, like that. So I want it lined up with the edge. This might be a horrible, horrible, horrible mistake, but we'll see how we go. So I don't want to cut it here. This is, oh, you probably can't see. I've lined it up with the edge of the um, the edge of the die with the edge that I want, but if I pop it through just like that, I'm going to cut my um, I'm going to cut my pot there, which I don't want to. I just want to cut it here. So I'm hoping that if I and we might end up cutting another one here where we muck up terribly, I'll pop the card off the edge of the cutting blade. This will be, you guys will be going, oh, don't bother, it's too much hassle. And I may well agree with you in the end. So I'm popping it there. I'm going to grab a piece of masking tape to keep it in place. And then what should happen if I line up my plates so that they just, just um, end here, I'll run it through my machine and it won't cut this end it'll just cut here there you go that's the theory anyway let's see how it goes and I'll move it so you see it coming out the other side and I might just do it there's a first click there where it's gone over the edge of the die I might just run it back so that it doesn't even it's not even tempted to cut the rest of the of the shape and that's probably a lot of effort for very little effect but anyway let's have a look there we are oh it's actually cut the edges a little bit which i didn't want but that's not too bad actually flip it over like that which is the way we're going to use it you don't actually see that too badly so there we are we've given our little um, pot a little flower pot um, a sort of little serrated um, beveled edge there which is quite pretty okay so you know I don't know if it's worth if you've got a, uh, a decorative punch that would do that for you then uh, that might be an easier option but I'm quite happy with that in fact I might flip it that way so you actually see it nicer okay and that's a good tip actually for going you know for eight forward you can actually just use your 
dies, you don't have to use the whole thing. You can just hang them over the edge and use parts of them. I did a card a year or so ago where I actually extended the die out by doing sort of multiple versions of that. I might try that again for a future video. There we are. So there's our little flower pot. Yeah, quite, quite cute, that little edge. Right. Okay, so to go in the flower pot, we need a little insert. And somewhere here I've got a piece of cardstock. It's not that one. Here it is. So you need a piece of whisper white or basic white cardstock that is two and three quarter inches by four and three quarter inches. And it's just going to fit just down in there. As you can see, just down in there. And this part is where we're going to um, decorate it with all our little flowers, just like that. Now, I would normally run some double-sided tape down the edges of those and actually seal our little flower pot up. But I noticed on some of the um, Pinterest so ones that I was looking at, they didn't actually seal it that way. They actually do it with the ribbon, with the ribbon and actually hold it closed with the ribbon. So I might try that this time. It doesn't really matter too much. I can always come back. I am going to use some double-sided tape to, to, um, to, to secure our little edge there just so it doesn't flick up too much but just a little bit a bit of double-sided tape or tear and tape whatever you like just pop it on there just so that that doesn't flap up too much there like that cool okay so we've got as I say we've got our little piece of card stock that goes in the center and then we can bring in our really cute little flowers and start looking at those love those colors they're really really nice whatever scraps you've got go for it you can do whatever you like okay so I'm going to start with the flowers first just get rid of the flower pot itself and just concentrate on our little insert there so I'm going to start with the flowers first I'm going to start with the biggest ones and pop those towards the back there's another one that one and because I like the idea of I like it being slightly higher in the center I'm going to pop that one sort of higher just like that so that's the first three so that's the basis for the for the frame at the back I'm just going to bring in some glue you can tell it's humid in my craft room because every time I take a lid off of glue it's already decided to come out so that's usually when it's warm or humid here in Hobart which seems to be happening a little bit this summer okay so I'm gonna pop that one on first now the one thing with this stamp set is that the glue will ooze up through the um, the holes that's all right I'm going to be covering it anyway a bit like uh, Vegemite on a certain uh, cracker that we used to uh, eat as children and that one up there again it's oozed up through the holes now I'm going to bring this one in the center and sit it up a little bit higher make sure I haven't stuck it to my cutting mat oh. just a little bit Okay, so there's the back there. What I'm going to do while I've got them here, look at that glue, <laughs> is just pop a little bit of this excess glue and pop some centers in there. Yeah, as I see, as I said, they're sort of quite sort of strange little centers because they're not actually circular, but that's all right. I can live with that. Okay, so let's work our way down. Uh, I haven't put a centre in the Daffodil Delight one because it would be Daffodil Delight on Daffodil Delight and it probably wouldn't be worth it. You probably wouldn't see it even if I did. So I might just leave that. What I thought I would do though is bring one of these smaller ones in and sort of layer up the Daffodil Delight with sort of make a little composite flower out of it. So if I pop that over there and then I can pop a little centre in the center there like that it just adds a little bit of extra interest and glue to it 
to our design. I'm going to swap glues because that one's just crazy. It's gushing out all over the place. I wonder if they're all of them going to be like that. That one's not too bad. But then I think it's it's um it's blocked, so that's why it's not coming out. Okay, so let's keep working our way down a little bit. So I'm going to bring in a nice little yellow one over this side, just like that. So I'm bringing that in as well. And then I'll pop a red one in the middle. And then get this one over here. So I'm sort of, there is a bit of um, method to my madness in that I've started with the big ones and I'm working down to the little ones. But, you know, you guys could go, just go crazy. You don't have to do the same as me at all. Okay, so we'll do this one. That's glue is behaving itself a bit better. And then this one over here. And those colours are really coming out really nicely. I'm pleased with those. And then again, on this little yellow one over the side, because I want to just add a little bit of interest, I'll bring a smaller one in again. And make it a little composite flower. See, they're really sweet, aren't they? Sort of layer them like that. I did want to put it in between, just like that. And then I'll give it a little center again. There we are. You could do that with all of them if you wanted to. Cut multiples of each one and actually pop it in and make it a bit interesting that way, that would be great. So I'll give these guys little centers as well. They're not little, they're quite large. Yeah. Yeah, how's that? You guys like that? That's really, really, really come up nicely. It's so different, the colors are just so different to the first one. The first one's sort of soft and sort of powdery almost, but this one's a lot brighter. Just going to finish it off with just one more little flower up under here now the thing to do to make sure you do is not put glue up under here because you can see we want our flower pot to slip up under there so if you've got too much glue um, underneath your flower underneath your flowers you need those petals those bottom petals to be free so that your card, your, your flower pot can slip up under there, which is the, what we want it to do, just like that. Anyway, so just a tip. So don't, don't go gluing them on completely or else you'll, you'll lose a bit of the effect of it. I'm gonna bring in some of these really pretty leaves now in our mint macaron. so funny sometimes when you add the something looks sort of sort of okay and then you add the the contrast color of the leaves and it just really lifts it so I really um, I never judge a card until I've got all the elements in because you just never know just one little thing will change it completely and that's what happens when you put these leaves in I think it just lifts it that little bit Just one more. No, I don't like him there. Yep. Too much glue. There we are. There we are. So 
yeah, it's changed it again. It sort of changed the emphasis and brought the, the green in, which is nice. These ones here, these ones that sort of with lots of leaves, what I'm going to do is bring them in behind just to frame the edge like that, just to give it a little bit more width. Uh, and I'm going to tick tuck them in behind. So I'm going to pop some glue on these, on this one on the left hand leaves, and then just pop it in behind there. So you're really only getting the right hand leaves sort of stick out a little bit just to give it that width. And then I'll do the same on the other side. So I'm going to put a little bit of glue on those bits on the left hand side. Yep, left hand side. And then just point that out again. So you're just getting a little hint. I'll turn it over so you can see a little hint of those leaves coming out the edge there. And again, I'll get those little wormy bits of glue before they stick to my table. Okay, how do you like that? Does that look good? I really think that's quite lovely. I actually think I like that one better than I like that one. But you guys can tell me, do you like the sort of soft colours of this one or the more vibrant colours of the one that we're doing today? I suppose it depends. It depends what your, who your recipient is. Okay, so that's that there. All we need to do now is stamp that with a sentiment and I'm going to use, as I mentioned, the sentiments from the In Bloom stamp set. Um, in the original, I used Happy Birthday, You Really Are The Best. Um, and I think in this one, I'll use something a little bit different. I'll use uh, You Are Amazing. You are amazing. And all of my lovely customers and team members and friends who watch all my demo friends you are amazing okay so I'm just going to pop that there just in the center so it just pops up when the cards opened there we are I was thinking with this one and I as I mentioned I have struggled with the little flowers so while I was lying in bed this morning thinking about this video I thought well I'm, I like to face my demons so how about I put some of the stamp some of these flowers just to show you what they look like uh, on the bottom here just for a bit of added decoration so just in the colors that we've used for the flowers so there's lots and lots of flowers here and they have lots and lots of in, insides. So you've got the big flowers as we did with the with the dyes, but lots of them have several different like little in, inner parts that you could use. There's bits that are just sort of dots. There's bits that are little flowers in themselves. We're all splodges and you've got some stems as well, which is good. So I will, I will come to terms with this one. I, I won't let it beat me, but I'm just gonna use the same colors that we've used in the card itself so I have my daffodil delight I'm just going to stamp a couple of little flowers around use a foam mat because it is a photopolymer stamp so I always bring in a foam mat when I'm doing that hmm. I've got the um the uh, outside my window to the right I've got the um the, uh, what do I call it, the the um, display flight guys. They must be doing some sort of display. Is it Battle of Britain weekend again? It usually is something like that every time I look out my window and I see them flying in formation. It's Battle of Britain weekend. I reckon it is. If I Google it, I reckon it would be. Okay, so I'm just going to bring these just little little flowers in just got distracted by those planes there's about seven of them all flying in formation have got all their the smoke coming out of their tails so they've got some trails coming out I reckon I'll google it and find that it is Battle of Britain weekend I don't know why I suppose it's still important um, so I'm going to bring in another one of these stamps got quite distracted then didn't I and my Poppy Parade. No, that's lovely lipstick. I want my Poppy Parade. Here it is. And I'll pop in just 
just on the edge there. I haven't left a lot of space, have I? There we are. It's a lovely dark colour, that Poppy Parade. Just beautiful. And while I've got it open, I might put the centres in those little flowers with the red, just to show the little... It'll be nice and dark against the yellow. There we are. So you can see what I mean. You've got lots of little centres that you can use to make various flowers. And then I might do some, they've got a little leaf here as well. I might do a little leaf in our mint macaron. Not leaving very much room for your personal message in this, but that's all right. You can always flip it over and write on the back. So just the mint macaron. It's quite a dark colour, so I might stamp off once before I pop it onto my um, pop it onto my card. So I'm going to stamp it off just on a scrap and then bring it in. Yeah, definitely glad that I did that. Okay, one more time. Oops. There we are. Probably do one, one more flower there, couldn't I, now that I've gone? I might as well commit now that I've completely committed to it. Might as well do one more, maybe just one little one. Wow, they're noisy. I don't know if you guys can hear that. How many is there? One, two, three, four, five, five of them. One more flower. And since I haven't used my mint macaron, uh, no, my mango melody, I might grab that. Mango melody. him a tiny little centre again just with the red again there. okay so there we are I've added a little bit of colour to my insert as well which is what I didn't do with the first one so let's I'll just bring that closer for you to look so there we are I've used some of the stamps Jen, you should be proud of me if you're still watching. I actually used the stamps. I was complaining to Jen that I just couldn't get to the couldn't get the hang of them, which is a weird thing to say, isn't it? Because it's it's a stamp. You shouldn't really <laughs> be struggling with a stamp. But anyway, okay. So there's the insert for our card. So what we're going to do is that's just going to sit just down in our little pot plant, and those sort of leading edge um, leaves will just sort of hang over the edge a wee bit just like that Ooh. just like that Ooh. so the glue's catching a little bit I might have to leave it till they're a bit drier so the glue doesn't quite catch as much as it is there we are okay so I'm going to um, make this close with a piece of ribbon so this is what the ribbon is um, it's uh, our um, it's a ribbon, it's the colour is actually Just Jade, I think. I've got it here somewhere. It's a Just Jade ribbon. It comes in a bundle. I think it's the beautiful, uh, the, oh, what is it? The, the trio bundle. I think it's the Flowers for Every Season bundle, but it's quite pretty and it will go quite well with the the mint macaron in our, um, in our leaves. So I'm quite happy with that. I was a little bit dubious with putting it with um, the granny apple green. What I'm going to do is grab some double-sided tape and I'm going to run the double-sided tape. Oh, well, here they go again. Oh, there's only four of them now. I wonder where the other one went. Oh, gosh. Oh, looking out the window, I've, I've, um, I've blinded myself. Okay, so I'm going to run the double-sided tape all the way across the front and then hoop it around the back there and all the way there you could just um, do front and back and I've decided to hoop it all the way around there because I'm going to use a continuous piece of ribbon I'll just take it off just 
peel it off the front first. Oh, okay, no, I won't. I'll just leave it on there. So I'm going to tie a little bow in my ribbon, and this this might might go well, and it might not. This is a new skill for me. The guys in my team will really remember that I shared a video with a lady who told who taught us how to fold ribbons um, with our fingers rather than a bow, uh, rip, yeah tie bows without a bow jig. So basically, you start with the amount at the end there that you want for your little tail. You take it around your finger. You guys probably all know this already. Around, loop it around, and then you can keep going. You know, as multiple times and make doubles and triples and quadruples if you wanted to. You loop it around your fingers, and you take it in between your th your two fingers, back through, and then loop it up the center. And you guys know how much I struggle with bows. Anyone who's watched me realizes that it uh, can be excruciating. And I'm not making it any look any better today, but the written it result should be a lot better. So bring that large tail through and then tie it tight. Okay, so I have a bow. Ta-da! And it's a pretty one too, it worked out well. Okay, you're saying to yourself, Julian, why have you got that big long piece there? And you'll see why in a moment. So I'm going to put this little ribbon on the front like that with its little tail there. And what I'm going to do is bring this second one. Yes, that's right. I'm gonna bring this second one around and then back and then use this part to form the second tail. Does that make sense? So if I bring that in there, glue those two bits together, you've got a bow with two tails and a loop, which is something I've always struggled with because, you know, how do you do... Yeah, I found it really difficult, but this lady's video was absolutely wonderful. Oh, there's five of... Oh, six of them now. Sorry, I'm getting distracted. Okay, so let's do that. So that's why I've got my um, double-sided tape going all the way around. So what I'm going to do now is take off. I might regret taking it all off but I'll do it anyway. Position my bow where I want it. That way. And stick it to the double-sided tape so it's there. Then I'll take this part, this long tail, all the way around. And back again to our original bow. And then you just want to curl it so it actually takes a um, takes a slight detour to um, to form the the direction of your little your second tail that you want. There we are. Oh, that's worked okay. And then I'm going to secure that there, although it's sort of secure now, and it needs a bit more angle on it. So just bring that out at an angle that you want. And I'm going to get a uh, ink dot. An ink dot. And force it in place. I mean a glue dot. So I want it to go out that way. So I might put an ink dot. I'm still working this out as I go. Pop an ink dot underneath there to keep it at the angle that I want. So there I've got an ink dot that keeps it out that way. And then I'll, uh, ink dot, glue dot. Get it right, Julianne. And then I'll put another one on there to trap our little bow as such, where we want that. There we are. Quite a complicated way of doing things, isn't it? But anyway. You've got it there. How's that? And I'll just trim those to the length that I want them. So I like the length of that one's pretty good. So I'll just bring this one up. There 
Okay, so there we have it. Our little bow with a loop like that. That was quite a lot of ribbon that I've used for that, like probably more than you'd use normally, but um, that's quite sweet. So I will pop the link to the lady's video where I got this hint because she explained it a lot better than I did. So if you're interested, I'll pop the link to her YouTube video in the comments of this video and at least give her credit that she um, deserves because she worked it out and it looked wonderful the way she did all her various doubles and triples and things. So anyway, there you go. So now I'm going to pop our little decorated insert into our pot, our pot like that. Hopefully it's dried enough that we can put that up a bit. There we are. And our little flower pot is done. I'm actually thinking I can cover, I might need a few little bit more flowers just to cover that white, but I can do that later. So there we are. So that's our little flower pot card and there's our original as well so and you can see here I did a double bow with this one I was getting quite clever and because you guys weren't watching I can actually I could actually do it quite well um, but anyway so it's a double one whereas this is a single one okay so there's our little flower pot cards for today as I say wonderful use of these um, pierced blooms I think that's just really really sweet and the fact that they're um, not a nice uniform uh, flower doesn't worry me too much because I think they're so pretty and that would usually worry me terribly. Um, but yeah, so hopefully you like that one. I'll pop the, me the measurements and the link to the video about the bows in the comments. And um, yeah, hopefully you guys can give that a bit of a go. So really love the dies for this set. Uh, and I'm sure with time I will come to terms with the, with the stamps. But the sentiments, as I say, the sentiments are really, really nice. Um, so that's the um, Pierced Bloom dies. Um, which are here and um, the in bloom um, stamp set which come as a bundle uh, hope you enjoyed that one guys um, um, pop back with me on Wednesday because I have my 15 minute card on Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. which is Australian daylight savings time so pop over to my Facebook page for for that um, and quick cards 15 minutes in out bang you're on with your day so it's really really quite good uh, and it's a bit of a challenge for me who tends to gobble on about stuff, as you guys can tell. Um, but anyway, if you have any um, questions about these stamping up products you've seen today, please um, drop me a line. If you haven't got a demonstrator uh, and you'd like the uh, copy of the catalogues, please also drop me a line. Uh, have a great weekend and uh, I will see you all next time.